Hi, and welcome to part 4 of your 6th iOS programming tutorial. In the first 3 parts, we created this basic web browser that allows the user to enter a URL, go forward and back, and load up a home page at the very initial loading of the view. But the one thing you'll notice is it's looking pretty ugly, and just the sound of blue bars, and we can't really delete all the text with a single cross button on our text field so there's a few things we want to change and that's all we're going to be doing in this tutorial is making the actual web browser look a bit better so it'll just be a quick tutorial but the information you learn will be valuable later on so go into your main storyboard.storyboard and let's begin with our text field so select the text field and we're going to change a few things firstly we've got a placeholder text and we like that that looks good but let's have a look at the various border styles. By default, a text field has those rounded corners and is just a white background, but we could change that. Click on all four and let's have a look at what they all look like. So let's change the border style to be this indented look with a bezel. Looks pretty good, but there's not a big difference and it doesn't quite fit on the toolbar so well. If we try the square again, it doesn't quite look right. And we could try it with no border at all and then it looks the same again. Let's just stick what we had originally. Then we need a clear button, and that's the little sort of opaque black button that appears on your text fields that you might have seen in apps that allow you to just click that button and it clears the text in the text field. So let's have a clear button appears while editing, and clear when editing begins. And let's change the keyboard to have a just a normal keyboard I think we'll do, but we could change it to for example an email address or a URL. In fact, let's change it to a URL. And let's change the appearance to alert, so that it has a black transparent look, and change the return key to go. The return key won't actually do anything, because it takes a bit of code to do and I haven't shown you yet. But retain this project so that in later tutorials you can change it yourself. Let's make the text sort of a dark grey colour instead of a black. And then let's also click on the entire toolbar and change its colour. We could really define the app's colour theme here, and that's what we'll do. I want this to be a greenish web browser, so let me find a good green, and I'm going to select that as the tint colour for my first toolbar. And I did that just by clicking on the toolbar and clicking on the tint colour, and then selecting a colour from the, this colour picker. I could also select a HTML colour, or use the palette, or anything like that. Then, click on the bottom toolbar and do the same thing except this time don't click on the square with the color click on default and select the recently used color so that we have a consistent color then I'm going to select the forward button and change it to be an icon I could use a custom icon by creating a custom icon which I'll show you how to do in a later tutorial and then selecting that to be the image but instead I'm just going to choose one of the iOS uh, identifiers there is no back or forward button exactly but what we could do is we could do a fast forward and rewind button. So let's do that. So fast forward for the forward button and rewind for the back button. Let's run our application again and I'll show you some of the changes we've made. Firstly, in our URL bar, we have this black keyboard with the go button and we got the dot com and forward slashes and things that people use in a web browser. We also have a problem though. When we click on .com, autocorrects changing it to .not, because .com is not really a word. Let's quickly fix that up by going back into our storyboard, selecting the text field, and make sure you've got the actual text field selected, and then we need to set it not to automatically autocorrect. To do this, we need to go correction under the underneath minimum font size and go no, and also capitalization, none, in case you had capitalization selected. Then run the project again, and you'll notice that we don't get autocorrect. So I could type something that makes no sense, but autocorrect isn't appearing. Let me quickly type a website into our URL browser. I'll just type Google in, and then I realized, hang on, I don't want Google. Now I can just press this cross button, and the URL goes away. You'll also notice if I zoom in really closely, that our color is now a lighter gray. A little bit less harsh. The other thing you'll notice is, say I type in a website, and then I press enter, go onto that website, and in a moment what you'll see is the website will load, 
And then if I go back into the URL bar, it'll automatically clear as soon as I go into the URL bar. You could get rid of this, and remember that we can do that by unselecting clear when editing begins. If, for example, the user wanted to copy the URL and we haven't added a uh, exactly added a uh, share button, then that would be useful not to have that feature enabled. But I do like it because it means the user doesn't have to go and delete the text every time they enter into the URL section. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and in the next few tutorials, we won't be continuing on with this project, but I will be showing you how to, for example, create a share button where you can share to Facebook, Twitter, email, and so on. And I'll also show you more about alert views and that sort of thing, so that you can then go and elaborate on this project yourself. And I'll do a review of the project in about a month when we've learned a bit more about you programming iOS applications. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you for our next tutorial.